transcendence beyond addictions why does a spiritual path becomes difficult this morning we were trying to connect people are in different time zones space but amidst all these diversities of time place caste creed nationality there is one thing common that we are part of one cyber space there was a breakdown somebody's microphone probably was on feedback was coming connection took a little while something like this happens this cyber space is bountiful it is full of information full of all that is beneficial for humanity but we live in our narrow individualistic approach if we look at this way cyber space represents god god is god is bountiful it has given you enough light sunlight moonlight rain and all that man needs but we live in our narrow individualistic approach guided by this and that shankar and other philosophers mystics have said calm lust crowd anger mud ego sense loop greed more attachment they are the five robbers they constantly rob you of your inner serenity of merging with the ocean merging with the cyber space that exists around us in its bountiful nature christianity talks about seven sins a simple thing i give you a few examples that helps us to understand anger anger comes when you constantly live in the past something has happened in the past and you continue to nourish and nurture that particular thought particular even that particular situation and that continues to surface whenever you are interacting with someone this becomes an addiction you cannot get rid of it then greed we continue to look at the other why other has so much of money why the other has progressed and why i don't have this and that behind that there is a lot of effort if you look at the jews if you look at indians they are very industrious wherever they went they progressed enormously they came as an immigrant they started working day and night established themselves and progressed it is said according to statistics out of the students that go to graduation in the higher education in american universities percentage of indians is 13 the consolidated income of an indian family is 90000 dollars per month whereas the average income of average american of other descent is 65 why there is so much disparity i have a bunch of customers they are living their work place and residence during the non peak hours the this the time traveling time would be about an hour last night 10 o'clock the person came home to collect some rice but i was not home so i told him that he can come he asked if he can come early he took 45 minutes from my place to reach to his residence this morning half 5 he came then he has to go to the kitchen and prepare the meals then for 9 o'clock he has to distribute at different locations where his business is full scope at one place and it is carried continuously working like that and also we try to compete with the others why the other has as i said greed continues to come someone told me look you have a competitor 
someone else came into the similar type of business. So I told the person right then, I have no competition with anybody. My competition is with me. How I lived yesterday and how I am now. Did I improve from yesterday to today in my dealing with the people, in my behavior with the people? Now, I interact with the people, the business community, and because of the spiritual, the people in the spiritual field on a day-to-day -day basis. How is my dealing? Is it out of greed, out of anger, that I should not help this person or that person? or something or the other. Then, if you remember that your competition is with you, how you dealt with your children today, with your wife, with your spouse, with your workers, with your boss, with your neighbors today, and how are you going to deal with them tomorrow? Is there any improvement in that? If you continue to focus on that, Greed cannot filter into you and once it filters, it becomes addiction. There are certain things which are in the DNA of a person. The DNA of a person, I heard a child was born. As soon as the child was born, he asked the doctor, Doc, do you have a cell phone, mobile? Doc said, why do you need the mobile? He said, I have to text to God that I reach safe. There are certain communities, they are known for certain things. Jews are very industrious. They can think from the time that is the kind of a business thinking, industrious thinking. The intelligence is in their DNA. While there are other communities, it is not there. You can see a person of the Sikh origin and it's the Indians, very, very industrious, wherever they went, Gujaratis, Punjabis, South Indians, their level of intelligence. Most of the people that own, that are at the highest positions in their workplace, majority of them are South Indians. It is in their DNA. Some people's DNA has, as soon as they're born, they start dancing. They start different kind of things goes on. Attachment. Attachment to what you have. Remember, if God is bountiful, He shares with you without any restriction. Are you doing the same? If you start sharing whatever you have, a pleasant smile, it is not that you have to share money with the person. Your understanding, your love, your concern, your care, whatever you have, you start sharing it with the people. In a way, you have developed the quality of God. A couple days ago, I had a car which is in a very good condition, working very well. I had given it to my son. He drove it for a couple years. Then he wanted another one. So I got another one for him. So he said, Dad, we can sell this vehicle. I said, no. This vehicle had served its purpose. Give it to someone who is in need of it. You have enough resources. You can buy a car. He said, but Dad, we can make the money out of it. I said, do not be greedy. You have your new vehicle and there are many who are in the need of it. When you needed a vehicle, you was given it, even without your asking. Now you give it to someone. This is a part of charity. Charity comes from a Sanskrit word cha. Cha means continuous flow. If water does not flow, it becomes a stagnant pool and Whenever there is no movement in the water, it becomes stagnant, it becomes, begins to stink. Charity means you are constantly flowing all that you have, you are sharing it. The flowers share the entire world, in the world everything that is there, it is sharing. It is in a charitable nature. 
Man is charitable because he forms a charitable organization and he starts living on charities. Charity means you are sharing out of your bountiful in whatever way you can do. I smile. If you can share your resources with anyone in the existence, every morning at a particular time, the birds start flocking around my door because they know they are sending a message that we have come. It is time for our breakfast. I give them a mashed bread and they eat. I am sharing what I have with someone in the creation of the existence. Birds form the creation of the existence of God Almighty. Sharing with them, spending my money, giving, inviting people for special occasions, not for a drink party or that, that comes in a different way framework. This is here you are sharing it with someone who is needy and if you don't do there comes a blockage your progress will be hindered and you cannot transcend and this will become your addiction that the more I can have the more better. Process is reversed the more you share the more you get. If you restrict your sharing then it will not help. I told my son this car we are sharing it with someone. It has served our purpose. Let it go to someone else who needs it. Identify someone. Give it to him. There is no need to take any money from the person. You have enough. God has given you enough resources. Share it with people. Whatever you have. Then you will feel from within something which you have never felt before. Arrogance will not come. Then there will not be anger because anger comes when something you have you are losing or something that you want to gain and you are not gaining, anger comes in. Loke, greed, vanity, that is ego sense and amidst all that the flowers share but they do not have an ego. The birds share their music because they have. You have so much and yet still you do not want to share with the medium. Then how can you have the benefits of the bountifulness of God? Attachment to all that we have. These are the robbers that they continue to rob you of inner serenity. But you remember, I have heard in the school of religious teaching, the teacher was saying that you must do a charitable work every day. So next day in the class, John and Andy, they were trying to raise their head and hands to bring out the point. The teacher asked, John, what did you do? He said, I was at the traffic light and I made a woman cross the road. He said, how did you help her to cross the road? He said, he was, she was standing on the traffic light and I helped her to cross. Then he asked Andy, what did you do? She said, sir, he, she was not she did not want to cross the road, but he held her, two of us held her hand and make her cross the road. And so two of us did a charitable work, let the person cross the road who did not want to cross the road. She wanted to go in another direction, but we make her do so that we register a charitable act. This is not. Someone is in the need who cannot afford to have something you have, share it with someone. And sharing does not mean always money or does not mean that you don't want to share 
and you listened to me you said I said a smile is a good way of sharing so someone comes asking for some help you just give him a smile you shared your smile because you heard me saying so you have to look into the need of the person and your capability and accordingly you share it with the person if it a smile is needed if your resources are needed and there in every religion it has been given importance that we must share but what we do we instead of giving it to the needy we give it to the one who has more you will give the one morning the priest comes and he in the church he announces that he wants to have a cadillac so all the disciples all the church goers will collect the funds for the cadillac to arrange for the priest he already had a vehicle the charitable work means to give it to someone who needs it more then you continue to grow inwardly peace serenity and you develop the god like qualities it is not important that you believe in god but you must believe in godliness the qualities the qualities are more important and jesus said i am the saltishness of the soul the quality that gives flavor to the food if the salt is not there the, the saltishness in the food will not be and the quality that enhances the taste in the food that will not be there i was going to speak on transcendence beyond addictions let me look into those what is an addiction generally addiction has been defined as physical and psychological dependence on psychoactive substances as alcohol tobacco heroin and other drugs but greed is another addiction lust is another addiction anger is another addiction because these substances these qualities are psychoactive substances or psychoactive qualities that change your in entire thinking patterns these psychoactive substances they cross the blood brain barrier once consumed if you continue to consume anger lust or greed similar thing happens and temporarily after the chemical milieu of the brain it changes addictions can be viewed as a continued involvement with substance or activity despite the negative consequence associated with it we all know anger is not good we all know greed is not good we all know lust is not good but we continue to remain associated with it just as we see pleasure and enjoyment with the substances or activities in the same way we see pleasure in harming others in using anger in torturing the other and in spite of greed and lust as well over a period of time continuous involvement with such substance or activity makes one feel normal you develop an angry musculature 
You do not know but you act out of greed unconsciously. Why this person is making so much of money? Why can't he give me that? I am also one like him. I own a higher position, but he has more resources. The more you begin to share, the more that is what we call baraka, the grace descends in you. You will have more. The more you share, the more you have. Make it a point that every day you share with something or the other. The small or big. Today you can share small things. Tomorrow you can share big things. And when you begin to share your finances, your resources will never be scarce, uh, will be scanty. You will always have flowing because charity means that which is continuously flowing. If the water gets stagnant, if your act of sharing gets stuck at a particular place or particular action or particular cause, a block comes in, there will not be the flow and then you will come in the same way. Why this person with less income can have more things than I have? You do not understand how much effort she puts behind. When a person, woman gets pregnant, we go and congratulate her. But behind, before she gets pregnant, how many times she makes an effort? and suffers the pain. No one sees that. No one sees the effort of this person who reached home 12 o'clock in the night and half five he was at my place on the go and now he will go to his kitchen where he will prepare the meals and 9 o'clock, it has to be between 9 and 10 because the, the business place opens for public by 10 o'clock. By then, he should have all the meals prepared and distributed, brought in for distribution, sale through that center. You cannot see the effort, but you can see that he has a big house to live in. He has a big car. Certain professionals and many laymen now refer addiction to conclude abnormal psychological dependency on things as gambling, food, sex, pornography, computers, internet, work, exercise, idolizing, watching television or certain type of non-pornographic videos, a spiritual obsession, long and unnecessary telephonic conversation, cutting and shopping. It, in a broader pers perspective, it in, includes many things. The related concept of drug addiction has many definitions. Certain writers consider drug addiction same as substance dependence, while others provide drug addiction a narrower meaning that excludes drugs without evidence of tolerance or withdrawal symptoms. The American Society of Addiction Medicine has defined addiction as a primary chronic disease of brain reward, motivation, memory and related circulatory dysfunction 
and dysfunction in these circuits leads to characteristic biological, psychological, social and spiritual manifestations. This is reflected in the individual pers pursuing rewards and or relief by the substance use and other behavior patterns. But in the broader perspective, even anger changes your behavior pattern. Your greed changes the behavior pattern. Your ego sense changes the behavior pattern. Greed, all these things change behavior pattern. Addiction is characterized by impairment in the behavioral control, craving, inability to consistently abstain and diminished recognition of significant problems with one's behavior and interpersonal relations. Like other chronic disease, addiction involves cycle of relapse and remission. Without treatment or engagement in recovery activities, addiction can be progressive and it results in disability or premature death as well. When you are constantly engaging in these addictions or you make anything as an addiction, for instance, when an individual continues the use of alcohol or other drugs, Despite problems related to the use, substance dependence may be diagnosed. Compulsive and repetitive, repetitive use may result in tolerance to the effect of the drug and withdrawal symptoms when use is reduced or stopped. This along with substance abuse is considered as a substance use disorder. Substance dependence can be diagnosed with psychological dependence, evidence of tolerance or withdrawal or without psychological dependence. Broadly speaking, addiction refers to habits over which we have no control. When you engage in something constantly, it becomes your habit. Anger, it becomes a habit and you do not know that you are, have an angry musculature. You do not know that you are constantly looking at the others, why the other can afford to buy such a big house, why can't I? Why this person with limited resources can afford to have more than one, two or three cars? Whereas I cannot even change one car, but you have to look at the efforts behind it. And this becomes your habit. Whosoever you meet, you are, your focus or attention is on those things. It is better that you have competition with yourself. Yesterday I could not, five years ago I could not think of buying a car. But now I bought a car, I paid for it cash. There is a tremendous improvement of progress. So my competition is with me. How I deal with a particular customer, what was my way of understanding? Someone comes to buy something and he says, I like this, this you have to give me free, take it and go. Because the same person will come back again and again to you, rather than haggling the transaction on a small petty things, you have one dollar short, no I can't give you because you are one dollar short. These attitudes do not help if you are following a spiritual path. 
If you are following a spiritual path, these things do not matter. Someone comes asking you, in one night, 11 o'clock, a person called his uncle, you have gas, my cooking gas is finished. I told him, send someone and take my gas tank. And when you finish, they, when you get an opportunity, give, send, give me back my tank. Now, what did I lose in that? I did not lose anything, but I gained the confidence of that person whenever he is in need, he can rely on something. We do not even trust God that when we are in the need, God will help us. He will send someone. This is the promise that whenever you are in need, I will send someone. There is, there was a, a sculpture of Jesus in Rome in the Basilica. Basilica. Couple years back, couple of decades back, a madman went and he cut out. He said, I cannot be Picasso, I cannot be Michelangelo. But I can destroy the hands of this, disfigure this statue of Jesus and gain prominence. In that statue, Jesus' body is brought down from the cross and it is resting on the lap of me. Cut off the hands. They tried to restore, but they could not restore it. Then a young sculpturist came and he said he will restore it. He wrote a line under that, Now that my hands are cut off, I work with millions of your hands. Now that my hands are cut off, I work with millions of your hands. God works through his millions and millions of hands and resources that he has. You are in need. Someone assists you. And that can only happen when you are charitable, ready to share what you have. You will gain from different sources. And if you look into the life of the mystics, masters, they have nothing but they are the happiest person. And their needs are being fulfilled. Somewhere or the other, someone comes in and the things are fulfilled. Transcendence comes out of this understanding. That God is bountiful. In the same way, I am bountiful because I belong to God. I come from that. You may not be aware, but you have bountiful things to share with the people. In your small way, you can share with the people. And when you start sharing, you are developing the qualities and you will never be short of anything in your life. When you see the futility of something, that anger is not necessary, then anger as addiction drops, greed, lust, vanity, all these addictions drop. Then once in a while, just for a change, if you want to experience the anger, or then you can use anger as a tool. If you want to make love, there is no harm. The harm is in the addiction that you cannot live without it. The harm is that you cannot live without getting angry on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Naturally, the harm is not in the act. Remember, transcendence is not concerned with the act. Transcendence is concerned with the addiction. To be addicted to something is bad. It gives you a kind of dependence. And all addictions are bad. There is no good addictions either. I am not against anything, but nothing should become a habit and then an addiction. Otherwise, you are in a very confused state of awareness. You can use anger when it needs as a tool. You are not controlled by anger. Your gesture is not that of an angry man. Then when we go into, in the best we have developed, many therapies, the anger management. Management of anger is not going to help you to get rid of it. Understanding what it is, what are its implications will help you. And the therapy has become a fashion in the West. People were tired because what is the point? For a few days, you feel great and then comes the great dump. You feel worse than before. Then it goes again to the therapist, becomes a kind of addiction. Your understanding is the first and the foremost criteria. And there is no end to, go, to create more and more addictions. It is like an unending process, this continues, it begins and never ends. People go on moving from one therapy to another in their whole life, always feeling this one is going to work, I'm sure. And then it seems to work for a while, then it becomes addiction and then it stops working. So this we have to understand and work accordingly. This understanding that what is the nature of addiction, it can be to the substance bringing from outside. When you bring a substance from outside, it changes your alchemy. Anger changes your alchemy, greed, lust, vanity, all these things change your alchemy, produces something and then it becomes a habit. Addiction has to be dropped only when it makes you unconscious. When you look at it, what is anger? It is far more intoxicating than any alcohol can be. Greed, lust, these are far more intoxicating than any other substance could be. What is jealousy? What is hatred? They are far more addictive. You can easily be easily take out your drug addiction, any institution like Alcoholic Anonymous can help you. But to set you un uh, unaddicted to your jealousy, ambition, competitiveness, anger, greed, lust, rage, potentiality for violence, no Alcoholics Anonymous can be of any help to you but a few, a very few people, enlightened one has simply pushed you upward. They have distributed themselves. They are not holders, they cannot be. And their understanding the charitable nature, sharing is going to help. This is what addiction means. If you do it, nothing is gained. If you do not do it, 
you feel that something is missing that is what a smoker feels if he smokes he knows nothing is gained he is doing something silly just a stupid things taking a smoke in and throwing it out anger is a form of smoking greed lust jealousy these are all robbers that constantly rob you of your inner serenity be aware and that is why the sanskrit says tashmat jagrat 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 they are the robbers that constantly rob you of your inner serenity therefore be awake be awake be away every moment and when you are awake your awakening becomes the security guard the moment something is trying to filter into you these guards immediately send the sirens and you can save yourself from such things